Hi, I'm Daniel Zangle with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb. And we're gonna be talking about PRP for hair growth. So in the study that Don's about to introduce, the researchers used platelet-rich plasma to treat patients with androgenic alopecia, uh, which is one of the most common forms of hair loss, causes of hair loss and baldness. And it affects, in the duration of their lifetime, about 80% of men and half of women. So this is something that most of us are gonna deal with at some point. And there aren't a lot of good options out there for treating hair loss. Um, so Don, can you tell us a bit about this study? Absolutely, so the study consisted of 25 patients. One thing I really liked about this study is they included both men and women. Mm -hmm. So there were 13 women and 12 men in the study, and they all had clinical signs of AGA. Um, so this perspective study was randomized, double-blind, and placebo uh, controlled, split into two groups. All right. Um, who received both these groups received half head treatments of PRP and saline. Right. Yeah. So they like they'll do either PRP on one half or saline on the other half. Exactly. And so first group it was PRP on the right side, saline on the left. Mm -hmm. Second group PRP on the left side, saline on the right. Right. And I think it's worth noting that the saline looks different than PRP. It's actually mm -hmm. clear. The saline is of course used for the placebo in this study, no one's expecting saline to grow hair. No. Um, but the way they kept the study double-blinded is the uh, clinician they had doing the injections of saline and PRP was not the same one who graded the f before and after photographs. Exactly, That's there are two it. separate ones, one for data analysis, one for injection. Right, so the people analyzing the data really were blinded, they didn't know which half of the head had received saline or PRP. Um, so both groups received four injections of PRP, and uh, they actually put a red dot tattoo mm -hmm. on their head so that even when they came back later on for follow-up, then the, the dot would still be right, there. Right, right. That's how they can tell when they're taking these super zoomed-in photos that exactly. it's actually the same location. Exactly. Um, so four injections of PRP um, on the right side or left side, depending on which group it, mm -hmm. person in the group it was. Um, and a saline injection on the opposite side. Right. And so patients received a total of three treatments, mm -hmm. interval spacing of one month apart, okay. and a follow-up after six months, which seems pretty standard in the PRP land. Yeah, and with hair growth too, because it takes a while. It does. Yeah. Um, so the results show that PRP led to a statistically significant increase in mean angin hairs, uh, telogen hairs, hair density, and also the terminal hair density. Right. Um, so how, what do you think this compares to in terms of different products? Well, yeah, so that's an interesting thing to bring up because I mentioned earlier there aren't a lot of good options and it's, it's great that they're seeing good statistically significant outcomes with PRP because if you look at the FDA approved medications for treating uh, androgenic alopecia, you basically have two options. It's minoxidil, which is also known as Rogaine, mm -hmm. and then you've got uh, finasteride, uh, which is another um, medication that basically what they're trying to do is, is treat the hair topically to prevent um, the formation of uh, DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, and this is um, associated with hair loss. Now, Rogaine, you know, there's like mixed results, there are some negative side effects, but the finasteride in particular one of the side effects is permanent loss of sexual function. So you, you really- That's a really severe- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talk about a severe side effect. So, I mean, it, especially treating something like hair loss, which is technically just sort of like a cosmetic issue, although it can have psychological, yeah. social implications. Um, you know, I'm glad that there is an option out there for patients like PRP that has no chance of uh, <laughs> giving you these ex long-term negative side effects. At exactly. least that we know of. And, you know, biologically, using PRP makes sense, too. So, uh, once again, platelets, um, when they're activated, they begin secreting these growth factors. And they're thought to accelerate the healing process. And so the authors actually use calcium chloride uh, solution to activate the platelets prior to injection to ensure that there is that big dose of growth factors given uh, immediately. Right. Um, so uh, it's also thought that PRP might prolong uh, the antigen phase, um, which is just basically the dormant phase of the hair cycle. 
Okay, so, so or sorry, not dormant phase. This is the growing phase right. of the hair cycle. Telogen, I believe, would be the telogen is phase. is the dormant phase. Anagen is the growing phase. Right. Um, and also, the authors mentioned that they took extra precautions to eliminate leukocytes when they were purifying out the PRP. Mm -hmm. um, and they mentioned that this is considered pure PRP and right. also really insist that papers sort of standardize their terminology yeah. and the kind of treatment protocols that they're using when they're treating patients so that these studies can be replicated, mm -hmm. reproduced, and also applied out in the clinical world. Absolutely, yeah, and that's something that they, they mentioned in this study and we see it time and time again in the literature is there needs to be a greater standardization of what qualifies as PRP. Uh, some of these studies we've seen claiming to use PRP have platelet counts less than whole blood, which is not PRP. Um, other times you might see a platelet concentrations ranging from twice that in blood to seven or 14 times that in blood. So uh, there does need to be better standardization and better reporting by researchers. Um, this study did a, a pretty decent job. And um, again, it's a double blinded randomized study showing statistically significant hair growth in patients that receive PRP treatments. That's pretty promising. And I might mention too, the results were so significant that the side of the head that was treated with the placebo, they actually brought those patients back in and gave them the PRP treatment on that side of their wow. head to even them out. Good guy researchers making sure people don't have half a head of hair. Exactly. That's really nice of them. All right, well, thank you, Don. Uh, we're gonna have a couple more videos coming up talking about more applications for PRP, so stay tuned.